hey, 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 we're Ginger and the Desert Creations. We're going to keep on playing with those neon paints. Let's go paint. Um, I loved Dragon's Quest. I wanted to pair it with a canvas that has been needing a pair that wants to be displayed in a pair uh, flying colors. But the shape was wrong. It didn't look right. So I have to make one that goes with it. And I have actually been saving this 10 by 30 to do just that. But I kept kind of dragging my feet and I'm not sure what I want to do with it. And da, 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 da. Well, this is what I want to do with it. So to kind of mimic flying colors, we are going to have reds up here. We are going to have greens and yellows, blues, this is this this area ish and the purple at the bottom this is probably a little short because this is very close well probably very close actually to the amount of paint that we need for this space because this would be 10.7 ounces if i did my math correctly and these together are 11 if they are full all the way to the top which you never have to convince me to overfill a cup because my cup runneth over very frequently. Fluoro purple. Mart fluoro blue. Creative inspiration pains gray. We have two of those because there's just a drizzle in one of them. Creative inspiration sky blue. There is not much in there either. Mud mart fluoro green. Mud mart fluoro yellow. Amsterdam kings blue. Very little left in that. Liked the way it mixed with the... Uh, the yellow last time though, so we're gonna see if we can do it again. Montmart Floral Orange, Creative Inspirations Cobalt Blue, not much left in there. Creative Inspirations Thalo Blue, we've got backups on that one because I mixed up a bunch for a project I didn't do. Heh. Montmart Floro Pink, Floro Red, and Floro Magenta. Are we ready to play with the ice cream headache colors? Oh, but we have Montmart Black. And Amsterdam, that's a big bottle of black. The oxidey black and the titanium white. I have finally decided that I should put my Amsterdams in a big old bottle because I use them a lot because they're amazing. So let's get started, shall we? What I'm planning on doing, now white was not featured in the original in Dragon's Quest. And for reasons... <laughs> I think because I just want it to be as dark as possible. So, where are we starting? We are gonna start with Cerulean is speaking to me. Cerulean. Cerulean the top. There really is not much left. Ice cream headache, that is the pink. Then we're gonna go Thigolo. Thalo, there's gonna be able to be a lot of Thalo in this, because like I said, we got backups on that one. Creative inspirations. Pain's gray. Magenta. Heh <laughs> heh. I... Oh, screwed up. Oh, I screwed up. <laughs> you gonna you gonna watch me do it in reverse. Oh boy, you're gonna watch me do it in reverse. Huh <sighs> yeah. The way I just poured this cup, I will have to pour it from there to there to get the orange to be here and the pig to be there. Yeah. I pay attention to myself really, really, really well. Oh, let's do it right the other way. And you know what? I didn't put any black or any black, any white in that at all. So guess what we gotta do now? We gotta make the cup run over. What'd I tell you? Am I a psychic or what? We got white. We got black. And we got a running over cup. Purple. Bottom. Payne's gray. Fluoro. Cerulean green. 
I'm gonna do what I intended to. Squirt of black, squirt of white, blue on top, king's blue. Don't pick that one up. <laughs> that yellow, touch of the sky. Band of the last of that thalo right on top. All right, so I'm gonna come a little past and just pour it out this way. Kind of come down a little bit. Why not just shoot right through it all the way down there? Okay, here we go with that. And I'm gonna come up with that purple and green, because why not? Try to meet it in the center, because again, who why not? Do a little bit. Woo! I'm gonna flick paint in my face. That's fun. I'm gonna do a little bit here. Just kind of as a flow extender. Difference between a flow extender and a base coat is I would have covered the whole thing if it were a base coat. As a flow extender, I just wet the surface that the paint is not on and let it help the uh, the paint to the edge of the paint glide to where it wants to go it helps to not lose so much of the detail i'll just spread this with my paws and <laughs> Yeah, do it a little more carefully over here. Now with using the black as a flow extender, uh, it may come up in cells at the edge. So any color you use as a flow extender, yeah, best not mind if it shows up in your painting. Because uh, if it's like an ugly color and you would feel unfortunate if it showed up in your painting, it probably doesn't belong there in the first place. And we've got big puddles with a lot of paint and little puddles without it, <laughs> which is going to be a bit of a problem. I still have not learned how to pour evenly. I've got a lump alert I'm dealing with right now, right there. Ew, big lump. There is some craziness going on here. Well, let's center the paint a little bit, shall we? Before we run it down to the end. Running it that way. Running it this way. Going to move the weight of the paint down a little bit because that orangey area doesn't have a lot of paint in it, and so it's not going to cooperate a lot unless I use tactics. Okay, a mm, little further. There, now we're over the edge. And now you see how that black is popping up at that edge. And I got 
another lump. Got to react to the lumps as they come up right there. Say bye bye to the orangey lump. And let's hope that, that orange catches up because it's not cooperating yet. There we go. All right, we want to. Well, for one, we want to encourage that down over the edge fully because it is not there. Stack my finger in it. It's a good way to get things to cooperate at times. All right, I'm going to try to get as much of the weight of the paint into the center before I decide what it is I am doing. We can give, well, we can give it a little bit of a turn this way because I don't think it'll hurt it too much going this way. I am kind of going to encourage the Wibbly a little bit because the other one has an extreme angle to it as well. And I'm going to try to make one face on the other way. And that is over that corner. Now let's see if we can head up to this one. Keep that same angle, sort of. Okay, now I'm going to head this way. I think I like it with the, the edge of black on it. I do, I do. Not that black. This black. This black. The cheap black. We will press that into service all around the edge here just to make sure it's nice and covered. This section here. Okay, so we're gonna Drizzle it just along the edge right there. And there we go. We have black painted edges. This does very little uh, for my paintings because I do not use silicone. Um, it does sort of help. It pops bubbles. The paint changes in direction a little bit with the the warmth. You can see the black came up a little bit more in here and in here. So I mean it does do something but it doesn't do as much as it does for the people that work with silicone and dimethicone and, and all the cones. I think that is done. I love this tiny little very pure stripe of orange that didn't get mixed up with the black. It's like, I'm here, I'm bright, look at me. Calm down and take a look. There is not enough room to film this sucker. I look more ridiculous than usual if you could see me doing this. Let's go in for a close up. Come up along. Large. Pink. Red, magenta, loads of dark blues. This is gonna darken up so good. I kind of love this light spot in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Q 
crazy good magenta, big ol' swath of magenta. We got the orange looking pretty brown because there's a lot of black in it, but it is, it's got lines going on. And there are little bits of just like bright, pure orange. Just here and there, just pop up and say, hello. Greens and blues and yellows and purples. Oh my, path all the way down. You got the black infiltrates a little bit more down here. Blue and purple, Payne's gray. And that tiny little touch of black at the side. You're really not going to expect me to get the whole thing in shot again, are you? Because, heh, there's my light. All right, there it is. See what it looks like when it's dry. Give a great big hearty hello to Coral Reef. This dark and yet bright sucker is beautiful. It's got that amazing electric blue. That bright white and pink thing going on. I'm kind of in love with the orange area. Especially that little flash of it right up against the blue and green thing. Then we got the blue and green thing. And the purple at the bottom. Got great flow. Like I said, it's dark and bright at the same time. This one's in the running for a favorite of some kind. So there it is, Coral Reef. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye.